Hey guys, welcome back to 17 Square Meters Garden. It's time for another monthly balcony garden tour. It's time to give you some updates on my plants and to show you some highlights of the month. Uh, but first, there is quite uh, a lot of people that recently subscribed to my channel, so I thought it might be worth if I really quickly introduce myself and say a few things about my balcony, because as you watch the video, you may wonder, like, what's the growing zone, what's the sun exposure and stuff like that, so I think it may be worth mentioning at the beginning of this video. Uh, so, first of all, if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Dominika, I'm RHS certified horticulturist and a very passionate urban gardener. I wouldn't exchange my urban terrace for any real garden. Uh, I love it so much. Um, so I garden in zone 8B and my balcony, well it's technically a terrace, it's northeast facing so it only gets a couple of hours of morning sunlight in summer hence why I grow mostly ornamental plants and not so many edibles because most edibles require full sun exposure they need at least six hours of direct sunlight in order to produce um, abundantly and to grow healthy uh, and that's not what they will have on my balcony uh, I get maybe three four hours of sunlight in summer uh, but that being said I do grow sun edibles I have blueberries and alpine strawberries lettuce leafy greens and herbs and bay laurel tree uh, so I do grow some but just those that um, can tolerate lower light situation um, what else? My balcony is on the seventh floor and it's uncovered. As you can see, there is no roof above. Uh, so my plants are exposed to all kinds of weather conditions. So heavy rain and crazy winds and hail. Hail is a big one in summer. It causes a lot of damage. Um, so it gets pretty crazy out here. I posted many times on Instagram, you know, how my balcony looks after a very crazy windstorm or crazy hailstorm. Um, so yeah, I have to cope with all of that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So now let's go. Let me show you how the things are looking at the end of April. Okay, you guys, we are going to start with the back of the balcony, but I'm just going to walk you through the entire um, terrace just real quick. And we're going to start here at the back. So this part of my garden doesn't receive any sunlight at all, like it's in full shade. Um, so I'm trying to create some shade garden, uh, like I have a lot of typical shade loving plants like you see here, Hosta Halcyon, Hosta Royal um, and Hookeras and stuff like that, Foxgloves that I grew from seeds and some ornamental grasses. There is Tiarella uh, on the floor, also very beautiful shade loving plant and I have some mix of leafy greens growing in that crate. So slowly trying to add a few more plants to create a really cute shade garden in here. So I'm trying to step back a little because my balcony is really narrow. Um, so sometimes it's hard to capture things. But as you can see on the wall here, my Clematis Montana Maylene, absolutely beautiful plant, is covered in flowers. I bought this plant last year. It only had like two tiny little branches and there is only one stem coming from the base of the plant, which is absolutely incredible that all this growth comes from one stem. It's covered in flowers, it smells amazing, pollinators absolutely love it. Uh, but Clematis Montana Maylin is a very large climbing plant. It grows 8 meters by 3 meters, so um, I know that a lot of you bought this plant after seeing this on my Instagram. I received so many messages and so many pictures from you guys. Um, but that's a very large plant, so you need to have a lot of space on your balcony or on your terrace to grow it, and you need a large container as well. As I move back, uh, you can see my beautiful Acer Garnet. I have recently posted a video, uh, a tutorial guide on how to grow Japanese maples in pots. On the floor here, Hydrangea macrophylla. This one's called Early Blue, um, and it's full of buds. It's gonna be yet another beautiful Hydrangea year. Uh, geraniums are also starting to form flower buds, which is exciting. And on the floor here, Anemone blanda, beautiful plant, perennial plant, uh, amazing for shade and part shade gardens, beautiful purple flowers. I grew it from corms. So I planted corms in fall, and um, it's blooming now in spring. And here up front there are two baskets. One is a uh, wicker basket, one is wire. Uh, planted this composition, showed it in my reel on Instagram. Uh, I basically just lined the wire basket with moss, placed some plastic bag inside and planted a mix of purple pansies and yellow violas. And in this wicker basket I have a mix of um, daffodils, just planted a mix of bulbs in the fall. Uh, and we have some pretty 
varieties here. Most daffodils are already done blooming, but this basket is still looking pretty awesome. So on the railing hill, as you can see, I have a mix of pansies. These are ruffled pansies. I grew them from seeds. I planted the seeds last summer, so they took a long time to bloom. But that's usually the case with pansies. They are biennial, so mostly they just grow uh, leaves the first year and they bloom the second year. Though there are some cultivars, some varieties that bloom like within three months. It all depends probably on, on the cultivar. And I had yellow daffodils planted in all these pots all along here. But I have now removed them because uh, I do keep some bulbs, but uh, these daffodils were just simple yellow daffodils. So I removed them to make more space for pansies, um, to catch more sun, uh, because they still look pretty. So I'm still going to keep them probably until the end of May. Moving forward, we have some perennial plants that are starting to form flower buds. Here we have Rudbeckia, um, yet another Acer. This one is called Acer Orange Dream. Uh, here I have some lily bulbs uh, that I planted earlier in spring. And here was supposed to be my tulip display. And honestly, you guys, I think that this year was the worst year, like bulb-wise, because the April month uh, was so cold the, and tulips, they don't like cold temperatures like that. They do not appreciate cold snaps. So some of them grew really short, like these ones, they grew really short. And also, um, these are not the tulips that I planted. I planted tulips called Chinatown. They were supposed to have variegated leaves. So the leaf margins were supposed to be white and the tulips was supposed to be pink with um, sort of a green uh, stripe, uh, like in the center of the petal. Um, and as you can see, they are not variegated and they, when they were in like, because at their prime, because right now, obviously, um, they are a little, they look a little bit tired, but when they were in their prime, they were like orange red. So they, they, it was not the variety that I purchased. Here you have tulips. These are, um, more of a botanical type tulips. They are called, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, purple perfection. If I'm wrong, I'm gonna put the name on the on the screen. It's the first time that it happened that I would have daffodils blooming at the end of April. Uh, I, as I said, the year was completely crazy. Spring was so cold. The bulbs, I think they all got confused a little bit because I had um, tulips blooming before crocus and muscari blooming um, just now in April, daffodils blooming in April instead of in March or at the end of February. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a weird year this year. And another tulip, uh, I think this one is tulip, Turkstanica. Uh, these are also botanical type tulips. They are short and yellow. So these tulips I will be keeping because the botanical type tulips, the species tulips, they tend to come back better from year to year. And just a quick look up here. It's kind of messy because I store most plants that are um, not at their prime or they're just starting to grow. I keep them in this part of the balcony. And one thing that I really want to show you guys Look at this, that's my alpine strawberry. There's one here and there's one in there. Just a quick look also at the um, aloe, my aloe that is blooming right now. So here are my alpine strawberries. And now question to you guys, would you say that this plant looks unhealthy? That this plant looks sick? That this plant looks like it's gonna die? I don't think so. This plant is covered in aphids. Look at this. There are aphids everywhere look at this some people may say it's disgusting but i mean do you see that guys aphids everywhere yet the plant looks fine the plant looks healthy um and i wanted to show you this as an example that uh you know pests are normal let's normalize pests in the garden there are no sterile garden in the world you know there's a beautiful um uh, sentence saying if something is not eating your plants then your garden is not part of the ecosystem you have to have pests because pests are part of the food chain like Ladybirds, they, they need to eat, right? So if you remove all the pests, if you remove all the aphids, then you don't leave any food for those beneficial creatures. So what would be the reason why they come to your garden? They don't care about your flowers. They, they just want food. So you have to provide food for those beneficial creatures if you want to attract them in your garden. The good thing about aphids is first, they are not really gonna kill your plant. They're just like little mosquitoes that, that are drinking sap out of your plants. Um, so as long as you grow healthy plants, as long as you provide what the plant needs in order to thrive, they are not gonna be the problem. As you can see, my plant is perfectly fine. It's blooming, it's forming uh, berries. There's nothing wrong with this plant. So it's really important to take a good care of your plants because a healthy, strong plant is gonna be less susceptible to any kinds of damage caused by pests or diseases. 
Um, but that being said, obviously, things when things get out of control, um, pesticides are not the way to go. Because oftentimes I hear, oh my goodness, aphids are killing all of my plants. I had to spray my plants with pesticides in order to save them. And that's a really wrong mindset because if you spray pesticides, you are not saving anything or anyone. You are literally just killing everything and everyone. Because pesticides are non-selective, so that means they kill both pests and beneficial creatures. And if you kill everyone, who do you think will come back first? The bad guys or the good guys? Clearly, the bad guys, because uh, not only they reproduce faster, but they don't care. Like, they are always going to come back to your garden. But if you don't provide a safe, let's say, safe environment for beneficial creatures, then they are never going to come back to your garden. And then you get rid of all of those allies who would be helping you with those pests. For example, I use something that is called um, integrated pest control. So instead of spraying plants with all kinds of chemicals that are going to kill, as I said, both the pest and the beneficial creatures, encourage beneficial creatures into your garden so, and let them, let the nature you know, manage all of these things. So let those beneficial creatures, those predators, take care of your pests. And aphids, they are really easy to get rid of uh, in, like, by natural means. They have so many natural predators. They have um, ladybugs, so both ladybug adults and larvae, they feed off aphids. Lacewing larvae, uh, hoverfly larvae, all of those beautiful beneficial creatures feed on aphids. So instead of spraying your plants, encourage beneficial creatures into your garden uh, and create a safe environment for them to stay and to protect your plants. So I'm not worried about my alpine strawberry because I have already seen plenty of ladybugs on my balcony. Uh, so I'm sure that pretty soon they are going to discover that there is a pot full of yummy aphids for them to snack on. Uh, so this plant is going to be perfectly fine and ladybirds are going to arrive to take a care, to take care of this and to keep the aphid infestation under control. Okay, you guys, this is going to be it for today's video. I do hope that you enjoyed this little tour of my balcony garden in April. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you again next Saturday. Bye!